about Kerman's log, year two, day 36. It took some time, but we finally found someone willing to pay for scans of Ike. They just wanted the middle latitudes and weren't paying much, but it's better than nothing. We had to land on Ike to drill for ore and refuel anyway. After a transfer from Earth to Duna and making orbit around Duna, the Delta V readout shows I have just enough to get into orbit around Ike and to land. Though the percentages on my resource list with the liquid fuel and oxidizer make it seem like I have more, so there's a problem there. The views of Duna were spectacular, and it's a shame that we couldn't get more scanning done, uh, but we were in equatorial latitudes, an equatorial orbit, so we couldn't see too much of it. But the views were spectacular, and it's sort of amazing seeing it out there and realizing that I've gotten this far. But if I want to keep on going, I'm going to have to make sure not to get stranded at this point. And so that means refueling around Ike, finding a good spot to drill for ore. And that's mainly what's on my mind. But uh, I would be lying if I said that the fact that our approach to the station around Duna caused the station to shake a whole lot was also not worrying me. That is definitely worrying me. And I wonder what it means for our future in space here. Even though Ike seems really convenient for exploration and drilling and stuff like that, there isn't really much going on at Ike right now. There aren't any stations, not many corporations have established bases on the surface. It's pretty much unexplored, so that was that was exciting for us. Airshell and I were both talking up the possibility of finding something new and interesting on Ike. I don't know if we totally believed it at the time, but uh, we were speculating about a whole bunch of possibilities, and maybe it was just a way to kill the time. But we had no idea what we were going to find there, and what it would lead us to. We entered Ike's sphere of influence with a mild inclination, but it was enough to fulfill the contract that we had picked up. And so I just got into orbit there, and I really needed to watch out for my fuel. I wasn't sure what to trust. The liquid fuel and oxidizer readouts that showed I had a lot, or the delta V readout which showed that I had just barely enough to land and so I didn't want to risk any inclination change that might uh, hurt my chances of landing. I adjusted ScanSat to handle the fact that we weren't in a polar orbit and doing a normal orbital survey first and it seemed to work out just fine. It started the resource detection and the general scanning for anomalies on the surface and also the altitude scan. If I thought that the view of Duna was really good in Duna orbit, it was even better from Ike orbit. But it was just as I was marveling at the view that I noticed that ScanSat was picking up some anomaly on the surface. On our latest scan, there was something there. Not too sure what, but it was definitely a signal, some sort of ping from the surface. And since it was in an area of good ore concentration, I decided that we would land there and check it out. Part of me wondered whether our employer expected us to find something like this, and that's why they had us only scanning the middle latitudes, but I was hoping that they didn't expect us to find this, because that would mean it was an original find, and we could lay claim to it, whatever it was. I'm not, I wasn't entirely sure whether I wanted to lay claim to it or not at this point, but, but it was tempting. Anyway, I got ready to land. We had just enough Delta V according to the Delta V readout, but more than enough according to my fuel readout. So that was odd. I was wondering whether it was because some fuel was reserved for the fuel cells or something like that. We would need some fuel to drive the fuel cells to do the drilling, so it would be good to have some spare. I tried to make the descent as efficient as possible making sure to do most of the burn at the last possible minute, though I still needed to use some just to keep the craft oriented in the right direction. I did turn on the RCS for a little bit, but only for a little bit to handle the orientation. Otherwise, it was straight down. And from the height, the target looked to be some sort of disc. As imaginative as Arishel and I are, we couldn't figure out what the the target was, what the anomaly was, with that shape. Anyway, I thought I brought it down with a fairly graceful landing, considering it looked like I was on my last few Delta V. 
The fuel display was still showing a lot of fuel though. And actually it turned out that the top tank in the nose wasn't po properly connected to the rest of the, of the body. And so that was why that fuel was not flowing to the engine. So that's why I had more fuel than the Delta V readout showed. Anyway, we got started with the drilling right away. And there was ore to be found, so that was good. And the resources were being converted fine after our journey. So the ore converter works after our trip from Kerbin. But it's a slow process still, even with Urshel here to help it out. So I decided to take an EVA and check out our anomaly. Getting closer to it, it was pretty obvious that it was some kind of ship. But what kind of ship would be shaped like that? It would be horrible to try and get into orbit. And with a closer look, it had a lot of engines. Lots and lots of engines. But no landing legs. It seemed like there were places for the landing legs to be, but that they might have broken off. I landed on it without getting zapped by some sort of protective field or anything like that. It looked like the kind of ship that might have something like that. There were lots of parachutes, there were solar panels. It didn't look totally alien. It looked it looked like a Kerbal might have built it. But what Kerbal would build a ship like this? I didn't know. There were weird gaps in the panels that surrounded the central cupola. There was also a crew pod underneath the cupola, so there was room for two. But just two. On the front panel, there was a note from somebody called BK saying that he ate all the snacks, or she ate all the snacks. So it had to have been a Kerbal who left it here. But I couldn't figure it out. Was this legitimate salvage, or was I trespassing on somebody's property? I couldn't really tell. So that's the situation as I record this log. I'm gonna check through all the computer systems to see how long it has been left here. If it's been left here for a certain amount of time, it's legitimate salvage, no matter what. But I'm still working through that. And so uh, that's, that's where we're at, and I have no idea what to think about this situation. Maybe this is what we were expected to find by our employer? Or maybe, maybe I can lay claim to this. I don't know. But that's it for me. This is Buck Kerman signing off.